Hey everybody, Kindred Cooper with Hagerman and Company. Wanted to showcase a piece of technology in AutoCAD that's been there for many, many releases. But this piece of technology can really save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Looking at your standard everyday drawing, whatever it is, mechanical, architectural, civil, electrical, there's a lot of pieces of information in this drawing that you may want to reuse. Namely, when you get into a title block situation. So looking at my floor plan that I've got, when I cycle over to the layout mode or the paper space mode, in my title block, I need to populate these areas of the title block with information either from my drawing or from the objects in my drawing. The most obvious case is the name of the file. I've called this floor plan and that's what's already in my title block. You'll notice it looks a little bit different. The reason it looks different is it's because it's a field of information pulled from the AutoCAD file itself. So how do these fields work? Take for example the additional fields in my title block. Drawing number, revision, drawn by, checked by, scale. All of these fields I can pull that information from other areas of the drawing, from the file properties itself or even objects inside the drawing. Let's look at drawn by for example. In order to get a field of information, you have to start with text. So I'll just show you with multi-text or single line text, it works either way. I'll draw in a box of text. When it goes into the text editor, up at the top, you've got all your controls for your font, spacing, all that jazz. But over here on the insert panel, you have a field command. When I use the field command, I'm able to browse all of these different fields from within this AutoCAD drawing. Now you can filter this to look at dates and times, document related fields, LinkedIn fields, objects, things like that. If I look at the document fields, the author is who I would use as drawn by. You can have control of uppercase, lowercase, first case, title case, however you want to however you want to display this. So I'm going to go ahead and use the author field. You'll notice it comes in dashes. The reason it comes in dashes is my author field of my drawing file properties is blank. I'll go ahead and accept that. You'll notice it looks grayed out and dashes. If you print this, this gray highlighting or the gray background does not print. Only the letters print. In order to display this information, I'm going to go to the application menu, down to drawing utilities, drawing properties. Here you get your standard Windows file properties, you've got a general tab, you've got a summary tab, statistics tab, unique to AutoCAD, different from other Windows applications. Uh, you have a custom tab. This comes with a lot of different Autodesk programs so that you can add custom fields. This could be for things like material, minimum coating thickness, preferred manufacturer, things like that. Job number, whatever you might want to put in. So on the summary tab, you'll see a title field subject. There's the author field. So since I'm limited on space in my title block, I'm not going to put my full name in there. I'll just put my first initial and then my last name. When I say OK, you'll notice that the display of the field text does not change yet. You have to either click on the save icon to save the drawing or you run a regen operation and then it will update to display that text. So obviously my justification's off here a little bit. I might need to move it around, but the text came in. There's other pieces in here that you could do that with. Checked by, approved, even things that you don't have a field for. So looking back here in the drawing properties, on the custom, that's where that would come in. Again, you're talking about material, minimum coating thickness, things of that nature. Not only can you use these fields here in the title block, but you could also use them in the drawing itself. Most commonly, when you label a room in a floor plan, a lot of times you might want to put the square footage of that room. 
or if you're looking at a very particular view, like a floor plan view, you might want to put the total square footage under that view title. The way that can work is when you outline an area, for example, of a room, you've got multiple ways you can do that. And one of the ways is using a polyline. So if I use a polyline and simply trace out the perimeter of this room, I'm not going to include the closet. A lot of times you'll want to put this polyline on its own layer. So you may want to have a layer called areas. You can even set it to not print that layer. Maybe change its color or line time, something to stand out to you. Put this polyline on that layer. So when you're putting in these fields, you're going to want to use text to bring in that field information. So I'm going to switch to a different text. Use a text box. Call this bedroom number three and display the square footage. Now when you're working with this square footage, working with these fields, I've got the area drawn out using that polyline. When I'm inside the text, I'll insert that field and instead of using any of the other properties, I have to reference an object. So when I look at the object, you can reference various things of an object, uh, block placeholders, formulas, named objects, or just a generalized object. When I look at an object, I can use the pick mode or the select object mode, pick the actual area perimeter that I'm associating this with, and here are all the different pieces of information associated with that object. These are your standard object properties, your area, closed, yes or no, color, elevation, things like that. What I'm looking for with this particular object is that area. And how do I want to display that area? Current units, decimal, architectural, what your precision might want to be. So you've got a lot of flexibility here. When I click OK, there's the area of that room. Obviously, I'll tweak my text box so that everything fits a little better. Maybe resize my text a little bit. And there's the area that comes out. If this room size changes, just for show and tell purposes, I'll shrink the polyline down. And you'll notice when I regen, the area updates. So this can be used for a wide range of things. Most notably, back in paper space mode, the scale field. So when you're working with paper space, you're working with viewports. So I've got a viewport here drawn on the viewport layers. The viewport scale has been locked. It said a 32nd of an inch equals a foot. I want to get that scale to show up down here in my title block. That way, if I ever change my viewport scale, it will automatically update here. Works very much the same way. This time I'll use single line text. On single line text, you don't have the ribbon system that changes. Instead, what you can do is just right click and you will see insert field. Same modes apply. The dialog box comes up. I'm going to insert the field from an object. That object is going to be selected. It's going to be my viewport window. What I want to put in here from this viewport window, right down here, the, uh, sorry, not the visual style, I'm looking for standard scale. On the standard scale, again, you've got control over the format, how it displays. I'll say OK. There's my scale. Complete my single line text. If I come in here and unlock my viewport and I change my scale to something else, we'll say 16th equals a foot. Regen. And you'll notice that the scale changes. So AutoCAD fields are incredibly powerful incredibly user friendly and can save you a lot of time and a lot of effort either using them within the AutoCAD model area or within the AutoCAD paper space area in the title block or even in blocks or tables. They're very flexible, very easy to use.